Okay, everything ready? I actually don't hear much um, feedback, so that's kind of good. We can just leave it like it is for now. Let me just get a little... Uh... Do you guys see an image? Okay, um, let's just begin. Um, this is the second formal lecture for NMD 304. What I'd like to talk about today is poetry and time. You've got an assignment that's up on the website, and the assignment is not completely explanatory. It's going to rely a lot on today's lecture. And what I'd like to do is talk about poetry. Um, the first thing I'd like to do is introduce a poet which you probably all know, which is Robert Frost. Um, how many of you in the classroom, there's three of you there, are familiar with Robert Frost? Who's familiar with Robert Frost? Is anybody? Raise your hands again. Are you guys familiar with Robert Frost? Okay. Um, as you know, Robert Frost is a poet from last century, famous New England poet. Um, I don't know if anybody read the New York Times this weekend, but up at uh, Bennington College, they have one of Robert Frost's house, which is a very important house that uh, he lived in that they maintain on campus. And it was vandalized this weekend, or last weekend, I guess. A group of kids from uh, local kids went in, about 30 of them drinking, and tore the house apart, really destroyed it. It was sort of a tragedy. Uh, I'm not really here to talk about that. What I'd like to do is talk about his poetry in specific, and just using his poetry, not, not for the reason of um, our assignment, but using his poetry to specifically talk about what I, got, what I want you guys to accomplish in your next project. Um, in music and in poetry, you have a very basic structure that's used. And that structure that's there allows you to create the sort of iambic pentameter, the rhythmic order, and the structure of the written work. In music, it's the beat, it's the harmony, it's these things that come together that create the structure of the musical work. In a time-based video piece, primarily, you don't really have a set structure. There's not something predetermined that sets that structure up for you. For instance, you don't have, per se, or per se, um, the kind of structure that music has, or the kind of rhythmic structure that poetry has. What we're going to do in this project is we're going to steal a little bit, or borrow, or appropriate, put a nicer term on it, from poetry, the idea of rhythm, and a metaphor for rhyming. Um, in time-based media, we talked about this briefly the other day, you have a couple different ways of working with time, and I'm going to ask you a question right now, so this is our little question and answer, so we've got to try and see if this will work. Um, what are some of the elements of time, and if you read the homework assignment, you probably know them off the top of your head, but what are some of the elements of time that we can work with when we're manipulating a video clip in time? You have to speak up. Frame you have frame rate. Is that it? Uh, you have to really speak loud. Uh, I can't hear you, Jake. Please talk again. Well, no, that's not. That doesn't have anything to do with time. What we're talking about is how can you manipulate time in a video image? What are, the, what are the abilities you have to do with time? Frame rate is actually one of them, but frame rate is sort of a, a larger picture. What we're looking for is sort of the, what, what frame rate breaks down into. In other words, what is frame rate, what is there to frame rate? What can you do with frame rate? You have to speak really loud, and I'm sorry, speak towards the computer. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's not so much about controlling what they're receiving, because you, you're going to be doing that anyway. 
But you have the ability to manipulate time completely. You've got fast motion, slow motion, forward motion, reverse motion. You can freeze frame or pause, and freeze frame is a very important part of video because at the moment that you freeze the frame, it becomes a real significant moment in a moving image. You also have things like stutter step, which is, uh, or you could call it shutter step, or however you want to you, you want to term it. But in uh, VJing, which is where it comes from primarily, a stutter step is that you can go any number of frames forward, let's say 15 frames forward, and then you come five frames back. Then go 15 frames forward, then come back to that fifth frame. Then 15 frames forward, then come back to the fifth frame. Then 15 frames forward. So you're sort of going forward, back, forward, back, forward, back. And you can do that in a jump cut where you go 15 frames forward, then cut back to a prior frame. Or you can go 15 or 30 frames forward, and then come backwards five frames, then 15 frames forward, then backwards five frames. And it can be any ratio. It can be 15 frames, it can be five frames, it can be seven frames, however you want to do it. The importance is to understand that the tool that you have, digital video, allows you absolute control and manipulation of the time that exists within a video piece. And that time is broken down, as, as we've discussed last week and we said again, into the, the frame rate, which is the number of frames that you have per second. Now, when you're working with your video camera, generally speaking, we're going to round up, you have 30 frames per second that you're shooting. When you're working with film, traditionally, you have 24 frames a second. You don't really need to worry about that when you're shooting the video. It's more important to worry about it after you've shot the video when you begin to process it. Now, this is really important to understand. In, in this class, I don't really want you to worry about, and I don't think anybody is worried about, shooting at 24p or 24 frames a second. Um, I want you to shoot with whatever the native speed of your video camera is. So let's say you have a really good camera like that. You have a Canon, correct? And that shoots at, 20, at 30 frames a second, or 29.97, correct? Okay, 30 progressive. That's fine. That's good. Um, some of you may have even a smaller camera that shoots at 15 frames a second. That's fine. I'm not worried about that. What's going to happen is after you've shot your video, when you bring it into an, a, a processing program like Final Cut Pro or After Effects, it's that point that you can set the frame rate that you're going to work with. And in After Effects, or in, excuse me, in Final Cut Pro, when you begin working, you have to set your sequence up to begin with with that frame rate before you can change the frame rate. In After Effects, you can change the frame rate of a given sequence at any point in time or overall of the project. What you want to do when you begin working on a project like this is it, it, it's not like writing a poem. It's not like creating a piece of music because you've got to set up some preconditions. And the first condition you're going to have to set up is what your frame rate is going to be, and that's going to be empirical throughout the project. So you have to determine on a project, do you want to work at 30 frames a second, do you want to work at 24 frames a second, and so on and so forth. It's, it's rec highly recommended that you work at either 24 or 30, that you don't go below that. Now, when you're working at 24 frames a second or 30 frames a second, you now know what the, the basic overall speed of your project is going to be, and you can begin to determine within that how you want to build your rhythmic structure. So you know that if you're working at 30 frames a second, if you start changing something to 120 frames a second in a sequence, what does that do? Does that make it faster or slower? If you go from 30 frames a second to 120 frames a second. In the same sequence, technically, if you're going, if you're taking an image, and you don't really do this in After Effects, but we want to think this way. If you go from 30 frames a second to 120 frames a second, what does that do to the video, Tech theoretically? Theoretically, it slows it down. Now, that's not how After Effects or Final Cut Pro work, but in a camera, if you're cranking at 24 frames a second with an old traditional film camera, and I like the way the light changes as I do this because it looks like a film camera. Look, I'm cranking the light. And then you start cranking faster and faster and faster. The image doesn't go faster. The image actually slows down. They call that over-cranking in the traditional hand crank cameras from the early part of last century. If you start slowing the cranking down, you actually 
begin to get a faster frame rate because you're shooting at less frames. You're dropping frames. Now, when you're working with video, that's not really what's happening when you're processing it. What it's doing is it's changing the duration of the clip. And it's taking a couple frames and it's interpolating between those frames and adding, in essence, frames between them. Which is why when you slow things down tremendously in video, it gets sort of choppy. You get slow motion, but it gets sort of choppy. Whereas when you speed things up, it's nicer because you're actually just dropping frames out. Okay, so let's go on to the more interesting part of this whole thing. Let's talk about poetry. So what I want to do at this point is I want to read a couple poems to you, and then we're going to talk about what we're going to do with these poems and what you're going to be doing with your next project. And I'm trying to make this very different than I did last time, and I'm having a little bit of trouble finding what I need to find. So let's go back to Robert Frost now. What I'd like to do is read a couple poems to you, and then we're going to talk about these poems and talk about the rhythmic pattern in these poems, and then look at a metaphoric way of creating rhythmic patterns with video. So let's start with Winter Eden, a winter garden in the alder swamp where conies now come out to sun and romp, as near a paradise as it can be, and now and not melt snow or start a dominant tree. Its life exists on a plain of snow, one level higher than the earth below, one level nearer than heaven overhead, and last year's berries shining scarlet red. It lifts a gaunt, luxurating beast, where he can stretch and hold his highest feet, on some wild apple tree's young tender bark, what may well prove the year's high girdle mark. So near to paradise, all pairing needs, here loveless birds now flock as winter friends, content with bud inspecting, they presume, to say how, which buds are leaf and which are bloom. A leather hammer gives a double knock, the Eden day is done at two o'clock. An hour of winter day may seem too short to make it worth it life's while to wake and sport. So, in this poem, Winter Eden, you'll notice that he's using a very particular rhyming pattern. He's broken the poem down into five stanzas, each stanza having four lines. And in those stanzas, the end of each set of lines, each pair, rhymes. So a winter garden in alder swamp rhymes with when conies now come to sun and romp. And that rhythmic pattern sets up the structure and the pacing for the poem. So how do you translate this into video? How do you translate a rhyming pattern into video? Any ideas? Okay, that's one way. That's a really good way. Um, you know, you show an image of a truck, and then maybe what would you show? Or you show an image of a cat. Maybe then you show an image of a bat. Now, that's, that's actually literally, and, and you know, like a baseball bat. That's literally trying to translate the, the rhyming word pattern of poetry into video by showing two objects that sound alike, like swamp and romp, or snow below, or overhead and red, or beast and feast, bark and mark, ends and friends, presume and bloom, knock and clock, short and sport. I'm pulling all the words out of the Robert Frost poem. But, but that's relying on a very literal element. What could we use that would be um, particular to video without having to rely on the image, but relying on time, that would allow us to create a metaphoric rhyming pattern. Okay, you can that you can loop. I mean, I'm asking a question. I'm really trying to get you to think about this. Yeah, you can set up looping sequences where you loop an image over and over. Now think about this. Let's say we have an image. Um, tell me how this looks when I when I try and share this image with you guys again. I think we're having a lot of trouble with the images today, but let's let's just see.
Is that playing for you? Yeah. And are you seeing it change as I move it back and forth? So I can take an image and I can move it, move it, move it, move it, and stop, move it, and stop, move it, and stop, move it, and stop, and so forth, and create the pattern for how that image moves. Um, what I want you to think about in terms of what you're going to do in this next project is I want you to come up with a, you, you can, you, you see from what I sent to you, you can come up with a very simple narrative, or perhaps, and I'm going to change the project a little and I'll upload this to the site, or perhaps you can come up with a series of visual clips. Now these have to be original clips that you shoot. I don't want you to go out and get stuff off the internet. And I want you to think that these things have a certain movement to them. And that movement that's contained in them is, is similar, it's not the same, to the sound of a word or the sound of a series of words in a line of poetry. And that you can either work with a very direct narrative, which is what I asked you to do in the assignment, or you can work with an in, what I'm going to call an indirect narrative, where you take a series of images and string them together and then say, okay, this image is going to start here and here. Start here and here. Start here and here. And I'm just manipulating this with my hand right now. And that you could go start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, pause. Start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, pause. And that's a rhyme right there. Now you can do it with the same image or you can do it with another image and say the first line is start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, pause. And the next image is start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, pause. It's the pause, the refrain of the image, that's your visual rhyme. Do you understand that? Or you could set up a pattern where you go forward, reverse, like this. Let's just, we'll do this. We'll go forward, reverse, forward, reverse, forward, reverse, forward, reverse, forward. And that again is your rhyming, is your, your, your first pattern, your meter, let's say. And by repeating that with another piece, you're going to be creating a rhythmic pattern. What I want you to do is to get a series of video clips that you make. And you can think of these as having some sort of narrative structure, or you can be very, very open about it. But what you have to do is bring this together into a sort of a tight system at the end. And I want you to look at poetic structure. Um, you, you know, if you want to, I'm going to send you a link. You could really easily just look at Robert Frost. I wonder if I can, uh, hold on one second. Let me see if I can actually share a link with you. This is all new for me, trying this with you guys. And I'm not sure I can, but let's just give this a whirl. Okay. We can't share links. Thought we could, but we can't. <laughs> there it is. Isn't that a great link? Do you see that? Okay. You could go to a website like Robert Frost's website, and you could look at the poems and read them there. And, and, I, and I'd like you to read some poetry because I really want you to look at rhythmic structure and try and think for yourself, how do you make a metaphoric relation? Now, this is not an exact science. As I said in the assignment, if you look on the website, and this is really important, I only sent you a, a piece of the, uh, the assignment in the email, and I really want you to go to the website today and read the whole assignment. I want you to be very experimental in this one. I want you to, to determine for yourself how you set up a metaphoric system of interpreting the rhythmic pattern, the, the word structure of a poem into the visual structure of a time-based piece. And what I don't want you to do is to, to fall into sort of the very literal thing, and, and Pat, I'm not, I'm not speaking down at you for this, where you show a picture of a bat, and you show a picture of a cat, and you show a picture of a hat. Because that's really the, the typical way that our mind would think about this. What I want you to do is say, okay, swamp and romp are, are the rhyming points in this poem. What if I go forward, reverse, forward, forward, reverse, forward, forward, reverse, forward, pause. And the next line goes forward, reverse, forward, forward, reverse, forward, forward, reverse, forward, pause. And those forwards and reverses are set up at the exact number of frames. So no matter what the image is, it's 
22 frames forward, 7 frames reverse. 22 frames forward, 7 frames reverse, and so on. Pause for 7 frames. And then whatever your next image is, it's the same thing. And begin to see if by doing that, you create sort of a, a structure between two lines. And when I say lines, I'm being very metaphoric. And then you set up two other lines, and then that's your stanza. Four lines equal your stanza. Then you do it again. You get two more sets of images, and you begin working with this again. And I want you to explore as much as you can in terms of setting up these structures, not only having a rhyming point at the end, in other words, forward, reverse, forward, reverse, forward, reverse, pause, and that's it, or it's pause, pause, image, you know, image, like let's go forward, pause, forward, pause, forward, pause, and then reverse seven seconds. could be that way. But that in the line itself, you begin to take the video and think that the, the images aren't the word. Now, I want you to think about this. It's not your images that are the metaphor for the words in the video stream. So it's not like I show an image of a cat, I show an image of a hat, I show an image of a bat, and that's my content. But it's the timing that becomes sort of the, the structure, the metaphoric structure of the word. So forward 15 frames is a word. Back seven frames is a word. Stutter step, 12 frames forward, three frames back is a word, metaphorically speaking. Do you understand what I'm asking of you? Okay, let's hear another Robert Frost poem. And uh, another image of put old Frosty back up there on the screen. Okay, this poem is called Into My Own. One of my wishes is that those dark trees, so old and firm, they scarcely show the breeze, were not as toward the merest mask of gloom, but stretched away into the edge of doom. I should not be withheld, but that some day, into their vastness I should steal away, fearless of ever finding open land or a highway where the slow wheel pours the sand. I do not see why I should e'er turn back, or those should not set forth upon my track, to overtake me who should miss me here and long to know if I still held them dear. They would not find me changed from him, the new, only more sure of all I thought was true. Okay, so again, we have a poem. The basic structure is that there's four lines to each stanza, and the pairs of lines rhyme, and there's a certain timing in the lines themselves. One of my wishes is that those dark trees, and, it, and I want you to, I, I really want you to go out and read some poetry because it's important that you explore it and, and sort of pull into your head how a poem feels, how a poem sounds, because I want you to think about that when you're making the video, that you're almost saying the image sounds like this, we're not as toward the merest mask of gloom, that, there's, that you're thinking of a pacing to how you're showing the image. And again, in a line, I don't want you to think that you have to show, you know, let, let me just count how many words are there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight words in this line. So old and firm, they scarcely show the breeze. I don't want you to think that you have to have eight different images in that line. What I want you to think is that you have to have eight different intervals of timing. Now, there could be similar ones. You could have forward, reverse, 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 forward, reverse, forward, pause. It's the end that will rhyme, that's your rhythmic thing, with the next line. So you'll have pairs. I, I think, you know, I'm, I'm really bad with poetry, but I think those are called couplets. We'll, 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 we'll hope that I'm right about that. Um, but they're going to be rhyming on those end pairs of the two lines in each, you know, the, the first two lines in the stanza and the second two lines in the stanza. And your rhyme is going to be what you do with time at the end of that. And by rhyming, that's going to let us see the structure because we're going to see an image go like this, 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 and then hold. And the next image is going to go like this, 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 hold. 
And because it holds for the exact same amount of time, that's where we're going to see the visual rhyme in time, it's a bad pun, in the piece. So do you understand what I'm asking of you? Are there any questions at this point? You guys speak really loud. You come closer. I really, I don't know why I'm having trouble hearing you. Oh, completely different. I mean, I understand how you're asking more of like uh, more of a structure and more of like an experimental way of doing it. Uh, I'm just saying, what's posted on the internet is 12 frames. But I know you're gonna... Yeah, the 12 frames is a beginning point for you to start with. Um, you didn't have the 12 frames. That's from the other class. Oh yeah, no, I know. Yeah, the 12 frames is a way of just looking at how. I mean, there's no rhythmic pattern, no structuring in the 12 frames. All I'm asking in 12 frames is that you take a, a time of video and no edit can be over 12 frames. Now you can set up a rhythmic pattern in that, right? What I'm asking you to do in this one is not worry about 12 frames, 24, 30, 1,000 frames, but I'm asking you to worry about the timing structure and, and almost in essence to, to not think so much about the image, though you really need images with motion, but to think about within that image, how do you play with the timing of the image? How do you, you know, does the image go slow? Do you take, do you take an image that's, that's, let's say, a half second long and slow it down to a second and then play it for a fifth of a second, then a second, then a fifth of a second, then a second, and then reverse for two seconds? And then take another image and do the same thing. Second, fifth of a second, second, fifth of a second, reverse for two seconds. So it doesn't matter about the, the amount of frames that you're using. That's a completely different thing in the 12 frames. What you're doing here is you're really trying to think of how time and the elements that you have to work with are forward, reverse, fast, slow, and freeze frames. And, and really the shutter step where you go forward and back, forward, back, little, forward, back, little, that's part of forward and reverse. That's sort of an advanced version of forward and reverse. You really think about how those things can become structural elements that create rhythmic patterns in how we perceive this. Does that make sense, Jake? Now, you're, you know, I know I gave the 12 frame edit to the other class, and you're more than welcome to read the assignments of the other class and to try those things. And we're going to do a 12 frame edit in this class, edit on 12 frames later. The reason I'm building it like this and putting, this is a brand new project. And the reason I'm doing this is what I want you to do is build from project to project. In the first one, you were only working with freeze frame, in essence. In the 3600, you're really working with freeze frame. Freeze frame to freeze frame to freeze frame. Now, you can work with the speed of those frames as they're coming at you and the amount that you hold on a particular frame, because I told you that you can structure this at the end, right? After you get all 3600, you can structure in terms of they're coming fast and they're coming slow and they stop. And they're coming fast and they're coming slow and they stop. And you have that ability to do it, but you're only working with individual frames, images. Now you've got a motion image and you basically can do a very similar thing in terms of fast, backwards, forwards, fast, backwards, forwards, fast, backwards, stop, if that's your rhyming pattern, or stop, forward, stop, forward, stop, forward, backwards, whatever you want to set up. And it can even be more complicated. You don't have to have things that repeat like fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow, freeze. It can be fast, 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 slow, fast, 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 slow. And when I go fast, fast, I'm looking at one image and then another image, then another image, then another image, and then an image that holds. Okay, because if you're using the same image, it wouldn't make sense. Um, but I'm trying to get you to build from project to project. When we go to the 12 frames, which will be the next project for this class, you'll now have the ability to understand what you've done with the 3600, what you've done with this piece of the poetry in time, and use all those in the 12 frame. And then what I'm hoping is that in the next project, and this is what I want to do with this 304 class, unlike what I've done before, is really make them build from project to project. So you've taken everything you've done here, and you can really apply it in the next one, and apply it in the next one. And I'm hoping that by the time we get to the final project in this class, you're going to have this sort of quiver, I guess you could say, like a quiver of arrows. You've got that you can choose from, that you can draw, 
and you can use these to, to strike to the center of the piece and apply different principles of timing, of structure, in terms of creating your final piece. And then it's just about what you come up with as a concept and a content. We're not as worried in these first pieces as the conceptual framework of them. What I'm really working, worried about and what I'm trying to get you to think about is the timing or structural framework of these pieces. If you add concept to it, I'm excited and content. But, I, but I'm more interested in seeing you playing with the form of it and the structure of it. Okay, let's have one more poem by Robert Frost, okay? And then we'll, we'll wrap this up with, with one last question. Okay, this poem is a little bit different than the others. And this is called The Times Table. More than halfway up the pass was a spring with a broken drinking glass. And whether the farmer drank or not, his mare was sure to observe the spot. By cramping the wheel on a water bar, turning her forehead with a star, and straining her ribs for a monster sigh, to which the farmer would make reply, a sigh for ever so many breaths, and for every so many sigh a death, is the multiplication table of, oh, sorry, that's what I always tell my wife is the multiplication table of life. The saying may be ever so true, but it's not the kind of thing that you, nor I, nor nobody else may say, unless our purpose is doing harm, and then I know no better way to close a road, abandon a farm, reduce the birth of the human race, and bring back nature to people's place. That was a very different type of poem, poem by Pro, Pro, Frost than the other ones that we read because it wasn't broken up into stanzas. It was one large poem. Again, it had rhyming couples of lines, um, but the pacing of the poem is very different. And the reason that I want you again to explore, spend some time in the library or online reading some poetry is to look at how a poem has a sense of time both in the line, from line to line, in the stanza, and the overall structure of the verse. And to try and get a feeling for that, that timing and bring that sense of timing into your own video piece. Okay, let's wrap this up with some final questions. It's only the three of you, so you guys are sort of responsible for thinking of what questions other people might want to be asking or what questions might be important. And again, you have to speak really loud for me to hear. Could we avoid having a comprehensible story? No, you don't have to avoid that at all. You can have a comprehensible story. You can have a very open narrative. It's up to you. I'm not, I'm not so worried about that. Now, I gave you these instructions where I wanted you to come up with a, a, an idea, then develop a shot list, then go out and shoot that. You can work that way if you want to, and in fact, I think that that would be a good way to work for, for most people. Um, if you want, you can develop a very open idea where you're thinking poetically. You're thinking bird in sky, um, water running by, um, trees blowing in a breeze, and then you just go shoot all those things. And that's another way of working. And then you bring those things together, and how you structure those things in time, what you do with those things in time, is going to be how you build your poetic structure. It's going to end up the same in a way, no matter how you start. The end result is going to be a piece that's built with a sort of internal logic and a set of internal timing points in it. Does that make sense, Pat? Any other questions? Neil, are you following this? Jake? Wait, you got to speak towards the mic really loud. you know when you'll have the site updated by? For the oh, the, the site's updated. The assignment's up there right now. The, the only thing I'm going to change, because based on the lecture that we're doing now and, and thinking about it, is that I'm just going to say that you can open up the narrative a little bit by just shooting for pairings of imagery. Like just thinking that 
you know, opening up saying, I want to shoot birds in the sky. I want to shoot um, dogs running. I want to shoot snow falling, if there's snow falling. In other words, you know, thinking of it that way. I want you to work as originally as possible with this piece. I don't want you to be stealing stuff off the internet or doing what this is right here. This is Alfred Hitchcock's The Birds, the opening title. I've been going through and painting out every frame of words and just keeping the birds. Don't ask me why. I have no idea. Just something to do in my spare time. Something to do when you're bored. Okay, any other questions? Well, again, I'll be available online if you have any questions. I think that most of you have noticed that I'm usually there uh, different times of day, so you can ask me, you know, IM me or get a hold of me. I think that this is working really well. I want to remind you guys that if I, that what I'm wanting you to do with the blogging on the Internet, and I know that this got a little rocky start, um, there's not something built into the software that we're working with. We're using a couple different types of software to build this whole course out, and we're hoping that towards the middle of the semester we're going to have a, a one-stop solution. There's not really a blogging system built into what we're doing. So Matt Levitt uh, took it upon himself at my request to go to blogger.com and build two blog sites. Um, if each of you was an author, we'd have a thousand threads by the end of the semester. So what we're going to do, which I'll do right now, is I'm going to go on, I'm going to post a new comment as an author saying uh, the lecture of poetry and time. And then all I want you to do is to reflect on this lecture any thoughts you have, any reflections, whether you have ideas saying, oh, yeah, you know, this is a da, 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 or saying, you know, I don't think what Raphael was talking about makes any sense at all. I really don't understand how a visual image can have any sense of poetry unless you use images that mentally rhyme, like bat, hat, and cat. So he's just totally crazy to think that going forward and stopping, going forward and, forward and stopping would rhyme. Whatever your comment is, post it. That's all I want you to do. And some people will post extensive notes, like I think Matt Levitt did that uh, on the 430 site, and Kathleen Bailey did that here. It's up to you. And then what I want you to do is read those after the post. It's about 24 hours to post them, basically. And then comment on someone's post. The, the main reason I'm doing this is I want to make sure that you guys, I mean, there's only three of you in class today. There's 11 people in the whole class, or 13 people in the whole class. I want you guys to stay connected on one level. Now, I am going to ask one day, very, very soon, that you guys all come to class and we all meet in class for the critique, and we're going to try a critique in two weeks. Next week, it's very possible I'm going to be conducting class from Singapore. Uh, we're hoping. We'll see. If I am, I'm going to introduce you to some artists from Singapore. Nothing's guaranteed yet. I'm waiting to hear back whether we're, we're flying out there. Um, if I am, you'll be meeting Singapore artists and students, and we'll see how that goes. Um, after next week, we're going to have our first critique of projects where we're, I'm going to ask everybody to come to class. Hopefully, we'll have the laptop thing worked out, and I'm going to show some projects, and we'll talk about them, your projects right in class. Okay, so if there's no other questions, are there? Well, go explore Robert Frost or any other poet that you want. Don't look at prose poetry because you want poetry that has rhyming patterns in it. And please enjoy working on this project, and I look forward to seeing your 3,600 projects this Friday. Okay? Pat, thank you very much for uh, bringing your laptop in. And uh, Jake, if you get 10.5 put on yours, it might be a little bit easier because you've got a noise-canceling microphone built in, right? You've got the eyesight built into your computer, correct? Yeah, that will work a lot easier. Okay, you guys. Have a good day. Bye.